Hello everybody, how you doing? Welcome to American Defender. So we're doing a back-to-back -back video today. Um, my last video that I just did, the Food for Thought video, I want you guys to, to really think about what I'm saying there. Am I really talking about the history of Glock? Because that's all pretty much well-known stuff. Okay. Am I really talking about the history of Glock or am I trying to say something else so that uh, particular algorithms can't pick it up. So, uh, think about that. All right. Listen to it and think about recent history. Um, so today's video, this video, video number two for the day, uh, we're not going to go into any kind of deep thought or anything. I'll spare you guys that. Um, I want to talk about a very interesting shotgun that I came up with here, uh, or that I found. I didn't even know these things existed until I saw this one. And then I was like, yeah, that's got to come home. All right. This right here, it's another Turkish shotgun. Okay. But this right here is, uh, I don't know whether to say if this is by these guys or they just stuck their name on them. Okay. Because really, they just stuck their name on it. But this is Black Ace's Tactical. Okay, this is their Pro Series L lever action. Aha! Twelve gauge, eighteen and a half inch barrel. You have a blade front sight up here. Not, it's not a bead. It's a blade with a dot. Okay, so it's kind of a bead and a blade. All right, kind of a, a combo. And I. I find that to be very interesting since there's no rear sight on here. Okay. Uh, we have the, of course, Benelli mobile chokes. Comes in just about every single Turkish shotgun made because the Benelli mobile chokes are the most popular choke in the world. Okay. Um, we have a six round mag tube from the factory. This is not an extension, this is the actual mag tube just coming through right here. Of course, lever action. It has a aluminum receiver. Now, this receiver is actually the same receiver that a lot of these other uh, Turkish-made guns use, but they're semi-auto. Okay, so this is a semi-automatic receiver that they're using here, and there's a there's a reason why they did that. A couple different reasons. One, they've already manufactured them, so they might as well use them. It's already a proven receiver design, so you might as well use it. And two. You're going to see here in a second, it makes for one heck of a lever action. Like a really smooth, good, fast-running lever action. And if it can handle the, the, the pounding that it's going to take from a semi-auto, then a lever action is nothing. Okay. On top of it, we have an 11 millimeter rail. All right. It's a dovetail rail. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Probably can't see it too well. All right. So we have an 11 millimeter rail on here. The stock, the stock is made out of wood. This is Turkish walnut on this thing. Uh, they paint it black. You can get another version of this where it's just the wood grain. And you can get another version of this where it's the wood grain or the black stocks. Uh, but with a uh, nickel plated finish on it. Okay, kind of like a marine version of it. Um, we also have, of course, sling swivels and a good buttstock uh, pad on there, a recoil pad. This thing, really, if you look at it, has, it shares a lot of design ideas and aesthetics with the Remington 870. So this is kind of what I would imagine a Remington 870 would look like if it was lever action and not bolt or uh, pump action. They never made it bolt action. What am I thinking there? Um, so, these are imported, again, or exported from Turkey by Hunt Arms Group uh, to Black Aces Tactical in uh, Longwood, Florida. They're a decent little shotgun. I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube that I've watched on this. and You know, I, I like to buy guns that, that people like to dog. Right? And, and the reason I do that, and the reason I put such odd, obscure guns up on my channel, is I like to do a little myth-busting every now and again, okay? 
Uh, I like to go out and I like to find guns that people say are absolute pieces of crap. And then I like to buy them and take them out and really test them out. And then just see, is it that the gun itself, the design is bad? Or is it that the person on said video may not know what they're talking about? Or there was some user error involved? Or... You know, just really what is it, and f and give a final word at the end there, uh, at least for myself and all of you, just an honest word of how the experience went. And th this this kind of got some mixed reviews on it. There's some folks out there that are like, oh, it jams a lot. And I think a lot of that's got to do with people short-stroking this thing. Because they, they, they bring this, this lever down and they don't run it all the way through. Because you can run it down right there and it'll stop. It feels like there's a dead stop, but there's more to it. Okay. Uh, another thing I've seen is when, when people say, oh, it jams a lot. And they'll be like, see? And they'll, they'll tilt the gun one way or another, right? And they'll run this lever real slow. And they say, like, it doesn't feed right. See, it's just a piece of Turkish crap, you know? And I'm like, you know what? You can't tilt a lever action. You can't do it. You can't tilt a lever action and then run this lever really slow. Uh, and you can't be hesitant when you're running this lever action. You can't just kind of run it and dead stop and then do that number and expect it to load smoothly. It doesn't work that way. So I think a lot of it out there is user error with this thing. I think a lot of it is. Uh, there might be some, again, little, you know, pockets here and there like every gun manufacturer has where they get one or two or three or ten you know versions of that gun or, or or i should say examples of it that do have something wrong that something was milled wrong or something like that it happens to everybody it happens to all of them all right but uh or i should say all manufacturers uh this one right here has been 100 percent with me all right it's been real nice um weighs it's not very heavy all right it only weighs six pounds Fully loaded weighs six and a half pounds. It's that makes this thing two to two to almost three pounds lighter than the Winchester, depending upon the, the the model of Winchester lever action you got and barrel length and all that. So it's a very lightweight option, and it's like a modern version of a lever action. And I like it actually. It feels very solid in the hands. Very very solid. Um, and it shoots really nice does it shoots really good um the recoil the, the butt pad on it absorbs the recoil fantastically um i have kind of i don't have a whole lot of rounds through this one uh but i have kind of tested it um three inch shells you know three inch slugs we've done slugs out of it already three inch slugs three inch buck three inch uh turkey shot magnum loads all that uh of course the standard two and three quarter inch stuff um you know our uh, field and target, and uh, I even tested some Black Aces tactical uh, buckshot out of this thing. I think it was running 14, 1500 per, uh, feet per second on that, and it just runs. You know, it, it, it does a good job. It's a very dependable little shotgun, in, in, in my opinion, with what I have found. Um, I don't see anything wrong here, okay? Uh, the takedown of it, some of you may not like it. Um, it is pretty mundane. You do you you take this little guy off here. Again, like most shotguns, there's always some kind of mag nut, something like that. You know, there's a lot of different names for this nut. But you take that off, and then you grab the fore end, and of course you're going to make sure everything's empty, and this one is. Um, you grab the fore end and the barrel and pull forward. All right, when you do that, kind of wiggle a little bit, and it should. slide right out like that okay and then what you can do is just kind of wiggle and push on the barrel gently and off comes off comes your uh your fore end there you can see it's made out of wood uh it's fairly thick actually uh, up here where it counts where it's going to see all the damage and, and recoil and everything about a quarter of an inch thick uh, when we get down here it's probably the thinnest right there but it's not too thin. And that's one thing that, that's a complaint on there that, that a kid made on here is, it's too thin. No, it's not too thin. 
Um, that's that's fairly normal thickness for it. Okay, it's not too thin. You want thin? Go look at a uh, Franke 48 AL. That's thin wood. Okay, very thin, flimsy wood. I can't tell you how many times I had to repl uh, repair the forend and butt stock on my 48 a AL. I used to have that thing was. It would it, it would snap every time. There's there's probably so many toothpicks in that thing from me drilling holes in the fore end and stuff and repairing it and gluing it and all that that uh, I've probably added uh, enough wood into that fore end on that that particular gun to create another fore end. All right. So, um, but that's how this comes off. Uh, and then your your trigger group, which I'm not going to take out. There's two pins. You press those out. And there's a screw right here. You guys can see it. There's a screw right there. You take that screw out, and then this whole thing will just... You, 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 you'll pull the lever back. And if the barrel's out, and you go to pull the lever back, and it won't come back. Just lift up or push down, actually, on the bolt. And you'll get it eventually. There we go. There we go. So now you can see that screw there. This is the arm right here that actuates everything. This just is sitting here on a hinge. All right, so this doesn't even need to come out. Um, this goes right directly to the bolt back here, right, this arm right here. Uh, so you'll take this screw out, you know, you'll lift all this up, you pop the two pins, and then just grab this and kind of lift up and out. And it comes right out, and then you can get in there and scrub stuff. Uh, you, to take the bolt out of this, you got to take the butt stock off. you got to take this plate off, put a 13 millimeter. Uh, down the back with a big long extension pull it off and then you can pull the bolt out the back um, And some folks don't like that and I get that but you really don't need to take the bolt out on this thing Really you can you can get in there and service things for the most part um, From in here like cleaning all the rails and everything you can get you can get most of it there uh, Though about maybe you know Once every year or so it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and disassemble it get in there and take the bolt apart uh, which is very Remington-like when you go to take it apart. Um, and then just kind of lube things up, grease them up, clean them up, you know. You don't have to take the bolt out a whole bunch, all right. This is really as far as you, you have to go down uh, with it to, to do a, a, a regular servicing of this, this particular shotgun. So, yeah, it's a, it's a cool little gun. Um, oh, I didn't mention either that the safety is over here on the left-hand side. Uh, with a pointing down, you're on fire, and when it's folded up, it's unsafe. Okay, and it does have a little pointer and a red dot and a red uh, a red dot and a white dot on it to uh, indicate safe and fire. Uh, so, putting it back together, it's pretty much the reverse of taking it apart. You know, you got your action bars here. You might want to kind of push those down. And as you push this in, this lever might move. It's okay, let it. Matter of fact, if you want to help it, you can. And then just kind of wiggle your fore in and make sure everything gets seated. You don't want that gap right there. You want to seat it like that. You can leave that up. Uh, and then we'll just take this guy right here and pop it right back on. <clears throat> Tighten it down. Close that. Give her the give her a test there. Okay, safety works. Okay, and, and again, like I was saying, this thing can, can be ran really fast. All right, really fast. Uh, it, it It's super smooth. I mean, there's a lot of people say, oh, it's not a smooth lever. What are you talking about? It's a very smooth lever. Um, now, the one thing I will say that I do suggest that you do uh, is... Learn how to do the cobra stitch, and just get you a little paracord, and put it right there on your your uh, your handle like that. It really makes it so much nicer. Um, this lever is really a thin little lever, all right. And f if you've got softer hands, it's going to chew you up. You're going to get blistered. You're going to bruise across the back of your fingers. So I don't have softer hands, but I wanted to do it anyway. Because it also, it helps you uh, slide around in here when you're running this around. This paracord helps you slide. And when you go to wrap this, I've learned that you take the core, the white core of the paracord out and just use the outside of it. And that'll give you a nice thin little cover here. And it's really comfortable. It still has a little cushion to it. 
but it'll it'll stop any kind of blisters or anything. Um, and you know, I've, I'm starting to develop arthritis really bad in this finger. I don't know if you guys are able to see the lump on my finger right there. It's starting to appear. I got it on both sides there. Like if you look at this finger, I don't have it. But look at this finger. See how this one's starting to twist like this? And yeah, it's, not, it's genetic. My dad's fingers are twisted like that too. Uh, but you got the lumps going on in the joints there. This one doesn't really have it, but there's times when these little bumps in your fingers right here, they bump that steel and it, woo, sends you to the moon, all right? So that kind of helps you with that. Um, just a little little tip I thought I would, I would throw in there, a little suggestion. So all in all, it is a decent shotgun, and here is the great thing about this shotgun, okay? A lot of the lever actions out there, you know, in the, in the 12 gauge category, most of them are the Winchester and the Winchester clones, like the uh, Chiapa and the uh, Norinco. And they're kind of mm, hit and miss, all right? And then the re regular Winchesters are super expensive. And then the Chiapas and the uh, Norincos, they're still, what, six, seven, eight hundred bucks used, okay? By this brand spanking new. Brand spanking new, anywhere between two ninety nine and three ninety nine. Okay, depends upon who you buy it from. There is a place right now online. I'm not going to tell you. You got to go search for yourself because you know YouTube forbids me from telling anybody this kind of stuff. Uh, there is a place that's very popular that uh, uh, has something to do with a particular state's armory. I can, I'm thinking of little palm trees, and they call a little palm tree something like palmettos or something like that. Anyway, $2.99. Oh, brand new. Okay. So, not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. Yes, it's Turkish, but you know what? As you guys have seen, I've tested a lot of Turkish shotguns on here, and they all end up running 100%. They all do well, and that's we've tested semi-autos, and semi-autos are the ones that are really going to be sensitive to things. This isn't sensitive to anything, all right. But whatever shell you want in there, it's 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 one and done, all right. So uh, I don't know what the hell that means, one and done. But either way, it'll run it'll run whatever, okay. So with that. I appreciate your guys' time yet again. Um, we're riding out a storm here in Arizona. We just had some 65 mile an hour winds come blowing down my street. So I'm riding it out, and uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. Hey, God bless you. Remember to take a kid fishing, take a kid shooting. Stay safe out there, everybody. God bless America, and I will see you on the flip. Bye now.